Welcome to a training module provided by Front Range Nuclear Services. From mobile solutions to full in-house services to our award-winning radiation safety officer and professional executive staff, Front Range Nuclear Services has provided high-quality diagnostic imaging to its customers since 1993. Whether nuclear medicine, MRI, or any other imaging modality, please let us know what we can do to better serve your community. Nuclear medicine is a highly regulated modality that requires extensive oversight, compliance with federal and state regulations, and routine safety training of personnel. That's why we're here today. That's why radiation safety training is necessary. It is a state requirement that we inform as many people as practical that might have some exposure to nuclear medicine. So how do these radioactive isotopes or radioactive patients affect you? The person has to work around these people or these isotopes from time to time or even on a daily basis. Well, let's take a look at some numbers. First, it's important to understand that through natural resources alone, such as the air we breathe, the sun that we receive every day, composite materials, even elevation or flying in an aircraft, all of these things produce a certain amount of radiation. The average American receives about 360 millirem per year from these sources alone. Now, millirem may be a number that we're not familiar with, but let's try to put that number in perspective. As we understand that we receive about 360 millirem per year from these sources alone, let's take it a little bit further. For those people maybe that work with the treadmill in nuclear medicine patients when nuclear medicine is being administered. Large hospitals that have very high patient volume putting through several patients per day, have recorded up to 75 millirem per year exposure for their treadmill staff. Those numbers are considered very low levels of exposure. Well, let's take it a little bit further. How about those people that work with these radioactive isotopes on a daily basis, such as a nuclear medicine technologist? What are the maximum limits? Well, for whole body, there's 5,000 millirem per year is the maximum allowable annual dose for those that work with nuclear medicine on a daily basis. There's another number for their extremities, the hands, and that's 50,000 millirem per year max. So as we look at the whole big picture, we're starting to get a perspective of maximum allowable dose limits for those that work with nuclear medicine and the amounts that we receive just from living and breathing and walking on the earth. Let's take it a little bit further. Pregnant technologists are actually allowed to continue performing nuclear medicine and performing their job as a technologist. And they are allowed 500 millirem exposure during the gestational period. They're allowed to continue doing their job provided they stay within those limits. All these levels that we're discussing here are considered safe annual doses for radiation workers. But what about the technologist? How much do they really receive per year? Most nuclear medicine techs receive about 200 millirem per year exposure as monitored by their badge devices. These badge devices are required to be worn by nuclear medicine technologists both on their hand and on their body so that we can record their whole body exposure and their extremity exposure and count what their total millirem per year exposure is over the span of the year to ensure that they are being safe. Those who have casual contact receive a fraction of the safe annual doses listed above. Let's take a quick look at the different types of ionizing radiation. The first is alpha particles. Alpha particles can simply be protected by something as thin as a sheet of paper. The sheet of paper actually stops those particles from passing through. Then we have beta particles. Beta particles are stopped by your layer of clothing or less than an inch of any other substance. And gamma rays. 
gamma rays, the majority of which are stopped by inches up to feet of concrete, or less than an inch of lead. That's why lead is often used with radioactive isotopes and for the protection of the people that work around those materials. To help protect us against these types of ionizing radiation, we use the time, distance, and shielding concept. Time, you'll want to decrease your time near the source. Distance is to increase your distance from the source of radiation. And shielding, to protect yourself by way of a shield, whether it's the inches to feet of concrete or walls or lead shielding. This is all part of the Alera concept, which is what we're going to discuss next. Alera is a concept that you might have heard before and you might be familiar with, but let's review. Alera simply means as low as reasonably achievable. It's kind of a common sense approach to help protect a person from ionizing radiation. The three things that we just discussed, time, distance, and shielding, are the three key elements as part of the Alera concept. Another part of the Alera concept is the methods of wipes and surveys. Our technologists are trained in the area of wipes and surveys. They use specialized equipment and procedures when they test different rooms to see if there is any unnecessary exposures, drips, or spills within any of the rooms where we perform nuclear medicine studies. We also, as part of the Alera concept, have spill protocols and containment protocols. But a spill can be something as small as just a couple of drops of radioactivity. And containment is exactly what it means. If there is a spill, our employees are highly trained in containing that spill to help ensure that the radioactivity is not spread and contaminating other areas. Also, the use of PPE is an, another important part to the Alera concept. Occasionally, you have a patient that's concerned about the amount of radiation that they're receiving. So what do you tell these patients about nuclear medicine? Well, it's important to note that nuclear medicine is proven to be very safe for use in children, adults, and even in pregnant women, and that the exposure to radioactivity is considered extremely low. It's also important to note that the radiation used is in liquid form, and it is injected into the bloodstream. They are not being irradiated by any other means. While they are being imaged by the camera, the camera itself is not producing the radiation. It's also important to note that common exposure is equivalent to receiving about two chest x-rays, or it's also equivalent to about spending 20 days in the sun. Also, in most cases, the radiation that is received by the liquid injection is completely gone from the body within 48 hours of injection. This information is helpful for those patients that might be a little nervous about their nuclear medicine study. As with almost any medical procedure, there are those patients that will wind up needing emergency care. Let's talk about nuclear medicine patients and how to handle an emergency. First, it is important to note that all excretions are radioactive. However, the amount of radioactivity is considered to be extremely small. There is, in fact, more concern about blood-borne pathogens than there is a concern about the amount of radioactivity coming from that person. It's important to note that even a person that has been injected with radioactive isotope to never delay life-saving techniques. The risks involved with the radioactivity are extremely small. Also, after touching a patient where excretions are present, whether it be urine or blood, or that excretions were suspected, ensure that you avoid touching other objects such as doorknobs or computers or anything else, and avoid going into other areas without being cleared by a nuclear medicine technologist first. It's important to note that once a 
person that has received a nuclear medicine injection, once they have already completed their study and have left the hospital, it's unlikely that the hospital, during an emergency situation, would know that that person had received a radioactive injection. PPE is an extremely important part and would normally be worn during an emergency situation and should provide adequate protection against radioactivity. It's also important to note that if there is an emergency situation and there were excretions present, that the technologist will collect all contaminated items in a designated container, and that is to prevent further contamination of radioactivity. Following an emergency situation involving a nuclear medicine patient, if possible, all members present during the emergency situation that may have been in contact with radioactive excretions, please remain in the room until surveyed and cleared by the nuclear medicine technologist. The technologist will be responsible for all cleanup regarding radioactive materials. It's also important to note that rooms may be temporarily closed depending on the level of contamination surveyed or found by the nuclear medicine technologist. The room will be reopened once the room has been deemed completely clear of any radioactivity. In this next section, let's talk about how to handle a spill. But first, what is a spill? Oh my god! The video depicted the nuclear medicine technologist accidentally dropping the radioactive isotope on the floor. That's one possible scenario. But let's talk about some other things first. First of all, the most likely location of a spill would be in the treadmill room. It's important to note that it may only be one drop of radioactive isotope to be considered a spill. If you're in the room, please remain calm. No one is in any immediate danger. The nuclear medicine technologist will be providing all the guidance for those that are in the room, including for the physician. No matter how helpful you want to be, be sure not to reach in to help the nuclear medicine technologist. That's to prevent any further contamination. The nuclear medicine technologist will handle all aspects of the cleanup. Also, remain in the room until you've been cleared by the technologist. Be advised that the room may be closed until the activity is clear. It's important to note that remaining patients on the schedule may be able to continue with their study. The nuclear medicine technologist will complete all surveys and do so under the supervision of the radiation safety officer and in accordance with state regulation. For some, the thought of nuclear medicine and radioactivity is a scary thought. That's why we are staffed with highly trained nuclear medicine technologists and an award-winning radiation safety officer to ensure that we are always handling all regulatory issues so the hospital can concentrate on other matters. Some other points of interest are regarding those patients that need lab work, it would be best to have lab work completed prior to a nuclear medicine study. Or if the lab work cannot be completed prior to the nuclear medicine study, to wait at least 24 hours following a nuclear medicine study to get lab work completed. Another point of interest is that nuclear medicine technologists should be the ones to remove and dispose of IVs. The exception to that is for in-house patients. In-house patients may keep their IVs as necessary. The IV will be flushed and the majority of the radioactivity will be in the bloodstream and not in the IV itself. This concludes our short training module on radiation safety. Our nuclear medicine technologist will make themselves available for any questions that you may have about the training that you received today. Keep Front Range Nuclear Services in mind for all your nuclear medicine needs, MRI needs, or any other medical imaging modality and give us an opportunity to better serve your community. You may contact us at our address posted above. You can call us at the number 307 637 4199 or visit us on our website at www.
frnsinc.com. Thank you for your time and attention. 